I have lived in Lake County for my entire life. For the most part, I have remained close to home, rarely leaving the neighboring towns of my childhood home. However, into adolescence, I began to explore the remainder of Lake County through virtue of holding multiple jobs deep into the illustrious North Shore. Coming from a working class town, I was amazed and filled with culture shock at my first exposure to the affluence and wealth that the North Shore displays around every corner. This is especially evident when taking a drive down Sheridan Road. However, upon reaching the northern end of the North Shore, we see a sudden shift in aesthetic and apparent socioeconomic status. The North Shore ends at Lake Forest and Lake Bluff. We quickly enter a working class town with a bad reputation in North Chicago. This is a swift change occurring in a short 15 minute drive. The stark contrast between Lake Forest and North Chicago has always been a source of fascination for me. How can two communities with polar opposite demographic makeup and reputations exist in such a short proximity? So I decided to do a little research while I make a short drive from Lake Forest to North Chicago so you can see the contrast for yourself. What would eventually go on to be Lake Forest was founded in 1856 by a group of Presbyterians from Chicago who purchased the land for its natural settings such as its lakes, forests, ravines, and bluffs. The new settlement was focused around the establishment of a new school that is today Lake Forest College. The unique aesthetic of Lake Forest was intentional as, from the onset, careful consideration was placed on building around its lush forest incorporating the abundance of trees to the design and feel of the town. The newly relocated elite began to take advantage of Lake Forest's abundance of open space for leisure activities culminating in the founding of Owensia Club in 1895 and the subsequent era of a state culture that followed. Homes and estates were designed by distinguished architects such as Howard Van Dorn Shaw, David Adler, Frank Lloyd Wright, Arthur Hewen, Jerome Cerny, Henry Ives Cobb, and the like. Landscape architects Frederick Law Olmsted and Jens Jensen also designed projects on Lake Forest. Post-World War II, local government ordinances were passed to preserve Lake Forest's historic low-density character and natural landscape. By doing so, its residents ensured seclusion and the preservation of its aesthetic of exclusivity and affluence. This seclusion extended past economic segregation as Lake Forest remained a sundown town well into the latter half of the 20th century, denying residents to not only African Americans, but to Jewish populations as well. Lake Forest and Lake Bluff are only separated from North Chicago by the Naval Station Great Lakes, Captain James A. Lavelle Federal Health Care Center, and Roslyn Franklin University. I initially assumed their location to be intentional given it is between Lake Forest and North Chicago and has a massive combined size of 290 acres. However, during my research, I found this not to be the case. President Theodore Roosevelt first conceived and designated the area for the naval base in 1905. The naval base first opened its gates to new recruits in 1911. Roslyn Franklin University relocated in 1980 to its current location adjacent to the Captain James A. Lavelle Federal Healthcare Center, a local VA hospital opened in 2010, and the Naval Base Great Lakes. Given this time frame, they could not have been intentionally placed to serve as a buffer between the two communities, instead occurring by happenstance, as there was a vast amount of undeveloped wilderness available in relatively close proximity to Chicago. North Chicago was developed around the turn of the 19th century. Initially considered part of South Waukegan, the town came to be following the establishment of several manufacturing plants in the area near the railroads that run along Lake Michigan. With the industry came a subsequent influx of European immigrants that worked at the plants settling close by on the east side of town. By the middle of the 20th century, the manufacturing industry in North Chicago had continued to grow, and the city had begun to experience the migration of African American residents to town looking for employment. The African American community lived segregated from the white community, settling in the northwestern part of town away from the plants. In the late 1970s, North Chicago began to experience a decline. Many of the manufacturing jobs for which its residents relied on left, and the population consequently began to decline. Those that stayed faced unemployment and underemployment. These conditions led way to a rise in crime and stigma of the area to match. The racial segregation found in Lake Forest and North Chicago are not uncommon for Illinois. A study on racial segregation and exclusion in Illinois by Maria Chrysan found that roughly 75% of Illinois towns could be considered sundown at some point in their history. This widespread segregation is a result of many formal and informal policies put in place from the 1890s to the middle of the 20th century. This, however, does not explain the economic segregation that exists between the two neighboring towns. 
The respective origins of the towns does do a lot of explaining as they flourish for two entirely different reasons. However, it is strange that the North Shore never expanded north past Lake Forest and into North Chicago. A study on the causes and consequences of inequality by Catherine Neckerman and Florencia Torche could provide some insight on how and why these two towns have remained economically segregated after all this time. According to the study, economic segregation rises as inequality increases, and inequality is on the rise. Income of the 1% has been increasing at faster rates than lower income groups. Rise in single income homes, the real value of minimum wage, decline in unions, and the rising cost of higher education have contributed to the stagnation of income in lower groups. The history of Lake Forest is consistent with the study's explanation for why more wealthy people might want to move to Lake Forest. That is, because people associate more with others like them. Social relations are more likely to form and less likely to dissolve for those of similar educational and occupational status. Higher socioeconomic status families pay higher housing prices in order to live in more homogeneous neighborhoods. We can see this in Lake Forest with the founding of Awencia and the concerted effort of preservation and isolation. There are also inherent advantages to being born into wealth and affluence, such as the passing of assets, better schools, and the excess of cultural capital. I feel this is the best explanation for why these two communities have remained the status quo. This is evident when looking into the statistics from the 2010 census as well as the 2013-2017 American Community Survey Five Gear Estimates. While the visual contrast is striking, the statistics really illustrate the inequality between the two communities as the differences are staggering. Lake Forest has a population of 19,375. The median age of Lake Forest residents is 48 years old, with a median household income of about 169 thousand. By contrast, North Chicago has a comparable population of 32,574. The median age, however, is much lower at 24 years old, with a median household income of about 41,000. 92% of Lake Forest residents are white, compared to North Chicago's population who are 48% white, 20% African American, and 27.2% Latino or Hispanic. Out of the 5,883 homes in Lake Forest, 80% have a property value of $500,000 or more and 38.8 over $1 million. Out of the 2,479 homes in North Chicago, 90% are worth less than $200,000. Of those over the age of 25 and over in Lake Forest, 78% have a bachelor's degree, 39% have a graduate or a professional degree with a medium household income of $141,818. Compared to North Chicago, where only 15% have a bachelor degree and only 5% have a graduate or professional degree. And North Chicago is much younger, with 58.5% of its residents being under the age of 20. What these statistics tell us is that, on average, Lake Forest is older, almost exclusively white, and much higher in wealth and incomes. North Chicago is significantly younger, lacking older populations. This could indicate that people tend to retire in Lake Forest and can manage to send their children off to institutions of higher learning, while North Chicago is an affordable working town with very little people choosing to retire there. The lack of wealth and degrees could indicate that once residents of North Chicago make more money, they opt to live elsewhere. Finally, we will end on statistics of the local high schools, fitting as we pass both along on this drive. Lake Forest High School is designated as a commendable school, while North Chicago's Community High School is designated a low-performing school. Lake Forest High School has a 99% graduation rate to North Chicago Community High School 67%. Only 1.2% of Lake Forest High School students are considered low-income to North Chicago Community High School's 98.9%. While at school, 15% of Lake Forest High School students are considered chronically absentee to North Chicago Community High School 68%. And it is these statistics that are the most alarming to me as they indicate a continuation of the status quo.